man! Oh goodness morning! Uh, wow! I mean, this is about the Anderson Silva Nick Diaz stuff. I'm not surprised so much with Nick Diaz though, but I wake up from one of the best dreams ever. Uh, long story short, beat up a bunch of rednecks and hippies, got chased by the police, I was like a vigilante, it was great. And uh, I wake up from that and see a message, Anderson Silva has failed and so is Nick Diaz. Not surprised by Nick Diaz because come on, he's a known pot smoker, it's not the first time, this is his third time with the good herb that he's failed. <laughs> and um, usually he has a method where he gets it out 10 days before a fight or something if, my, if I remember right. Uh, and obviously we all know about what happened after the Carlos Condit fight when he was out for a very very long time on a suspension a lot of people didn't like that, a lot of people didn't find it fair with Nick I'm not surprised at all, in fact nothing surprises me with Nick Diaz anymore he is one of the greatest MMA fighters currently going but he's like, the appeal with him is not just that he's a great fighter but he's like this car crash, this train wreck that you don't really want to watch but you have to watch it because you want to know how it plays out that is what I find Nick Diaz to be with me unfortunately then you go into the second part of this story and this is Anderson Silva I am shocked by this news absolutely shocked by this news that Anderson Silva has failed for two substances I believe in his system now Apparently they tested him in like the beginning of January or like 9th of January or something. He was tested uh, and there was two substances in his system. Uh, I saw some of the things on Twitter and people went absolutely crazy. Michael Bisping, God bless him. He, he, I knew he would comment on it and I'm not surprised. If you haven't seen his Twitter, check it out. Uh, I'm not surprised. Well, I am surprised by Anderson Silva because this is a person that has got an image of being a pure martial artist, a pure MMA fighter, a guy that, to be honest, outside of the clowning around and the sometimes not engaging in fights, he's got a very good image. People want to be him, people look up to him. He's the amazing Anderson Silva. I know a lot of people look at him as the uh, Muhammad Ali or the Roy Jones Jr. of MMA and I can see why people would think that. You know, he's, he, he was an amazing athlete and an amazing MMA fighter with incredible reflexes. A guy that we've seen beat the best fighters in the world. Now, all of that is going to be under a cloud of suspicion. And all of that is going to be questioned because of this test. And you wonder why I am very anti-performance enhancing drugs in sports. And I am because now a guy that has had a great career like Anderson Silva, a guy that, you know, had highlight real knockouts against Vitor Belfort, made Yushin Akami look like a friggin' mannequin, uh, destroyed Rich Franklin, destroyed Chris Lieben, the guy that's had this great career, all of that now is going to come onto, under question, because people are going to be like, okay, was he doing it throughout the duration of his career? Was he doing it then? When was he doing it? I know that one theory that one person had, and that was perhaps you know when he has this injury he started taking them around then maybe to I don't know fuse the muscles and stuff I don't know maybe around that time to help with the injury that he was t uh, maybe taking stuff and um, that's possible was he taking it from the very beginning of his career that's another uh, you know another question people have I know that a lot of people if you listen to uh, Joe Rogan and Mike Dolce's podcast they said, and it was Mike Dolce, that the story culture in MMA with Brazil is that these fighters take it at a very young age. Like as teenagers, it's part of the culture and then they just grow into it as they get older. Uh, is Anderson one of those guys? I mean, you can't always go, I mean, you can go on the eye test and you know, you can say, well, physically they look bigger or they look a little bit more cut than they use, usually do. Okay, that's suspicious, but there are lots of performance enhancing type drugs that are out there that aren't necessarily made to make you get big and get, you know, shredded or things. There's lots of various types, and I can't remember the two types he took off the top of my head, so please forgive me, but Anderson taking this stuff really, really hurts. It hurts this story because... Here you have a man that we saw, you know, lose in dramatic fashion to Chris Weidman. Then he had the rematch and he, you know, mashed up his leg. 
Uh, people think he's going to be gone for forever. People think he's going to retire. People think he's not going to be back for a very long, long time. You see him being carried out on a stretcher, crying. It was a very, very sad image to see. Now he gets signed to this super fight with Nick Diaz. He come comes back. Granted, he didn't look like the Anderson Silva of old, in my opinion. He looked a bit off, but he's still on the fight. It's this great story that is now tarnished by the simple fact that one man, well, both men, one's failed for smoking the good herb and the other one has failed for performance enhancing drugs. He pissed hot and, man, it's an absolute shame, absolute disappointment. And um, I'm sure there's going to be more in this story. I know that one person tweeted a picture of John Jones and Alice and Silva hugging and then put Alanis Morissette, isn't it ironic? which is uh, interesting too and um, man I can't help but say I'm really really bummed and disappointed by this Anderson Silva fails for performance enhancing drugs you never would have imagined that and I know that Anderson had made comments about others on PEDs like Chelsea Sun and, and uh, Vitor Belfort so that makes that even more interesting anyways I'm gonna stop I'm gonna uh, upload this video I'm sorry I don't sound too good at the moment let me know what you think. Let me know what you feel. Do you feel that this was one of those one-off occasions that he was taking it around the time of his injury? Do you think that he was taking this before the injury? Do you think he was taking PEDs throughout the duration of his career? Do you think this is going to hurt his image? Do you have a very different opinion or belief of Anderson Silva? Or do you expect more to come out? As for Nick Diaz, are any of you surprised? I would be surprised if he wasn't, you know, on the good herb for a few days. But... That's another story. Anyways, I'm going to stop. I'm going to upload. If you haven't met me before, I do videos on MMA, pro wrestling, other stuff, whatever you want, I'll do it. If you haven't before, hit that like button. If you haven't before, hit that subscribe button. I am out of here. Take care. Goodbye.